Welcome back to the Home Inspection Whisperer Show. Today, I have the boss, Mary LeMaster with me again. We are going to answer a fan's questions. His name is Adam. He had some, I'd say, I don't know, want to call them really basic, but he had some questions about you know, starting a new home inspection business. And I think a lot of the same questions are asked all the time in all the home inspection groups. And I'm sure if he's asking the questions, other people are asking the questions too. And I read through them. I think they're pretty good. What do you think? No, I think it's great. I think they're great questions. They're really helpful I for anybody some, who's trying to get in the business. Yeah, I mean, if someone answered these questions when I first got in the business, I would have been like, man, I felt like a million bucks. It would probably be worth a million dollars. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Definitely, especially the stuff about the sole proprietor and the LLC. That was a hard lesson. Yeah, so uh, before we get into the questions, we have some home inspection updates. So home inspection news updates, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So we're gonna home become, inspection world updates. We're going to be like, I'm going to become a home inspection news channel here <laughs> one day, a news anchor. <laughs> All right, anyways, uh, Ashy is canceled. Canceled. Yeah, they, they said it was because of the uh, new the Omicron. Uh, Omicron. Oh, Omicron, yeah. Omicron variant. Which and, sounds like a Loki variant. Loki, oh, from the from, from the, the show, the yeah, show. oh, yeah, the show, Loki. Um, yeah, I think that is a little fishy. You know, I understand that we they had all have have all the other stuff. We had to be what boosted or have your vaccination, your proof of your vaccination, and you had to wear masks the entire time, or you had to have a negative COVID test within seventy two hours. Yeah, I um, mean, they could have done it. That's where a lot of a lot of people got sick, but. I think it was a lot of things. First, the um, the ticket this year was much more expensive than yeah. the past year. It was seven hundred and fifty or something. And before it was like five hundred. Right? Yeah, it was definitely not seven hundred and fifty. Yeah. Um, and that doesn't include your hotel room. That doesn't include the hotel, and that didn't include the flight. So the biggest yeah. bummer about them canceling like five weeks is a lot of people already booked their flights. Right. So in our case, you know, we did thankfully get a full refund from the hotel because we booked through Ashy for the hotel. But for the flight, we just rerouted our flight to Miami. So we're still going to Florida. Yeah, because <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> going to Miami. I've never been there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, it's like I didn't want to waste the plane ticket, you right. know. Oh, yeah. So we get a, a, a vacation. Yeah. In Miami. Instead of Ashy. <laughs> but it's interesting because there were some inspectors commenting that they had lost money because they had taken their entire team right and we they had did. and oh yeah we almost took four two two or three people yeah and um those inspection companies lost those plane tickets yeah so it's it i think ashley kind of shot themselves in the foot with the timing of this they should have never opened it no i i agree i mean that they thought that they might cancel it just due to the virus then they shouldn't have ever opened it i don't think they got enough attendance but well, i'm not spreading it conspiracy in rumors. theory it's conspiracy theories <laughs> only but you know they doubled i know they doubled the prices of the vendors almost and then they you know 50 percent increase on our tickets i don't know yeah. and then they had all the rules you know how home inspectors are when it comes to rules so. yeah, the biggest one was you couldn't walk in and out of classes you had mm. to take the classes you signed up for when you registered which they'd never done that before yeah we always used to be able to just kind of go to and, yeah what we not wanted like to. come and go during the class but yeah. if you wake up in the morning and you're like oh i thought i wanted to take stucco but instead i wanted to take the exterior cladding you could just switch and nobody would be upset. I wonder if they did that one, not because of the virus, but they did that because sometimes the classes would just be packed. In some classes, just there was no seats. You, some people were standing up in the background. So that, that could have been a reason. I do think it was because of the virus, though, because they were trying to control how many people were in each room. Oh, okay. Yep. That's right, what that I thought. Sense. Yeah. So, but they yeah, canceled, so we'll never know. We'll never know. And we'll st I'll stick to my conspiracy theories. Yeah. So what we're doing <laughs> instead is um, we're sending some of our team, including Chris, to, to Priya, which mm. is the Texas Professional Real Estate Inspector Association, now owned by InterNACHI. So this is the first mm. year that InterNACHI is actually hosting the conference in Texas. I actually think it looks pretty good. Um, I don't know. I'll let you all know how it goes whenever we get there. Probably should a vlog of it, too, as well. But there, what are we bringing? I'm bringing... We're bringing four I think inspectors. there's might be six of you now. Oh, five. Since you uh -huh. mandatory invited one of our inspectors. <laughs> Tyler. Yeah. Tyler's in the same shoes I was whenever I first became a home inspector. He's like, oh, a conference. I don't need to go to a conference. And then I was like, no, man, you actually learn a lot at these things. And uh, I'm taking the code classes. And then also there's, uh, there's beer involved, too. 
in well, between the classes. So that's always nice. The benefit of Chapria is Texas inspectors actually get um, credits, unlike in Anachi, where Texas inspect. No, I said that backwards. The benefit of Chapria is Texas inspectors actually get credits, unlike Ashi, where Texas inspectors well, do not get credits. Well, they always say that we get credits. At no, Ashley. no, they don't. Oh, oh they don't. They don't. Oh, okay. They have a list when you walk in that says like. Um, a Sorry. list of all the classes and a list of the states, and it'll be like, does your class get, does your state oh, allow credit for this? Texas really didn't, wasn't any of the uh, conference, but. And one year and you got, the first year we went, there was one or two, and I submitted them, and. Um, they got declined. They got declined, yeah, because yeah, uh, Ashy didn't fill out the paperwork correctly. Oh, man, so. it sounds like you're beating up on Ashy pretty good. Well, I'm just telling the truth. <laughs> I'm telling it like it is. Yeah. I enjoy, I always enjoy the Afri uh, African, what? The Ashy conference. <laughs> It's nice yeah. to see everybody. No, I honestly, yeah, I think there's a lot of really good experienced inspectors there. And I really do learn. I think actually, Ashley has some of the best education classes and the some of the most knowledgeable and well-ran company owners that are in Ashley whenever I meet them. Also, I've never spent a whole lot of time at the InterNACHI conference. We ran into a few inspectors, but the amount of experience that's in ASHI compared to some of the experience that I've seen at the InterNACHI experience of the attendees, I say is better at ASHI. So ASHI is an older organization, so it's going to have older, more experienced inspectors. Mm -hmm. InterNACHI, I think, puts together a better conference. Organized, yeah. Um, that's why I'm interested to see what they do with the Texas one, since mm -hmm. this is their first year doing it. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's like it's a it's a win 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 lose on both of them, right? Yeah. yeah so like, well, it's interesting because yeah. InterNACHI scheduled their their conference in Texas three days before Ashi started, which couldn't have been a coincidence. Also, leading into my conspiracy, but they didn't get enough attendance yeah, because all the Texans inspectors were going to go to the InterNACHI one because they get credits. You get sixteen hours. It's sixteen hours, and it's closer. You don't have to fly to Florida, and and, and if, it's if and you, it's cheaper. How much was the InterNACHI? Well, yeah, if you're a Nachi member. Yeah. It's only, it was only like 230 something dollars for 16 credit hours. You can't like, usually yeah, you can't eight hours that. is that much, you know? Wow. Yeah. You can't beat that. And yeah. you get to be surrounded by vendors and get to, uh, learn, you know, some top notch education. That's, that's pretty good. Yeah. The, yeah. I mean, I think the full price was over 300, but still way cheaper, way cheaper yeah. than Ashy. Yeah. If I wanted to send one of our inspectors, it's the same price as sending our whole, t like, our whole team. <laughs> yeah, to, well, uh, I mean, the Internachi one. Yeah, that that Ashi, the price of Ashi was going to be astronomical this year. So, um, in a way, it's good that only you and I decided to go. And so, when they canceled, it wasn't that much of a financial loss. All right, so we'll stop weighing through the muddy waters there. You yeah, know, I, I hope we didn't dig ourselves in too much of a hole. I no, think, I think we've always been neutral on the hate between Ashi and Internachi. <laughs> That uh, we, we both I equally, refuse, yeah, I refuse to take sides. Yeah, we I think both, they both have their pros and cons. Yeah, it's funny. Yeah, we both equally like them and dislike them at the same yeah. amount. <laughs> I think it, no one wins. We've never fully drank the Kool-Aid of either, but there are some people who will die on the hill. Oh, yeah. They ultimately die on the hill, which is funny. Yeah. You, if, if you want to die on the hill, leave it in the comments section. I'm actually, <laughs> I'm interested. I'm interested. So uh, another thing is, is we updated the comments again, and we always send the updates to anyone that has previously bought the comments on homeiatw.com. We always send them the updates so uh, for free. So if you've recently purchased it, the comments, then we'll send you the updated comments for free no, forever, you know, as long as we're updating them and we're still alive. <laughs> um, also remember Christmas is here and don't forget to purchase our t-shirts to help support the podcast on homeiw.com mm -hmm. too as well. We designed some t-shirts. Uh, before we get into the questions, you know, sometimes I, I don't think we've ever talked, we, we probably have in the past, but talked about our experience level, you know, whenever we're answering these questions, like who are these guys answering these questions? Yeah, I mean, we've yeah. been in business since 2012. Yeah, but I feel like there's enough podcasts out there where they could be drowned out in the back where they don't actually know the experience level of us giving the information. But anyways, yeah. I'll get to the point. Um, so our company has been around, what, nine years now? So yeah, it'll be 10 in May. Yeah, so ten, wow, 10 years. So we've been around 10 years. In and, May, not in this May. upcoming. Okay. So 10 years in May. You know, I'm going to say 10 because it sounds cooler. <laughs> yeah. It's it's nine years and 
however many months. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, we completed my very first year, I completed 155 jobs and I was like nonstop hustle. But what was also impressive about that was I was in Dallas and I completed 155 jobs in Houston. So like I was actually marketing, I was driving down to, uh, and you were commuting to Houston to do jobs because yeah. we were like homeless and we had homeless. to live with your parents. I was living with my dad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was yeah. in the Marine Corps. We had to live with your parents for a while because we couldn't afford a place to live. I had like $4,000 to my name. <laughs> <laughs> and then my stepbrother was nice enough to let us stay at his house in Pearland for a while. Yeah, for a, yeah, you stayed down there for what, a few months? Yeah, well, a few months, weeks once few I weeks. got a job. Yeah. But even when I had a job, I lived here for a while without you. Yeah. Was, you were still commuting. So yeah, driving down, marketing, driving back, working for my dad a little bit, driving down, you know, marketing, maybe completing a job and on the verge of being broke, which is nice that we had family to help out, which is great, you know, family and friends. And so at the end of this year, through a lot of heartaches, failures, ups and downs, we are going to close around 2,500 inspections. And it wasn't just this year that was failures and up and downs. He means in the whole... The whole year, yeah. The whole... Yeah, since the whole 2012. Thing. Yeah, we still we still had ups and downs this year, you know. And it's funny, it's like the... the We, you know, failed just as much, I'd say, not just as much, but... No, no, it's funny. It's like the people that... The mistakes we made this year seem like 300 years ago because this year has just been so full of crazy. Yeah. And the successes too. So like, it's funny, like we had like one really big mistake. And if we had this mistake, I don't know, four years ago, it would have just... Much more catastrophic. It would have just ruined us. But now yeah. we're just like, okay, yeah, stuff Roll happens. Roll with the punches. Roll with or the punches. one person has to sit and do paperwork all the time. <laughs> I don't know who that would be, but, uh, <laughs> you thought it was easy. But <laughs> <laughs> um, anyways, if you don't get that inside joke, that's her, that it would be, it would be Mary. She's I'm the, the one that does the, she's paperwork. the one that does the paperwork. <laughs> uh, but anyways, uh, yeah, so we completed 2,500 ish inspections this year. So it's funny. My first year of doing business, I did 155 jobs. And now in like less than, uh, you know, just a little over half a month, we complete the same amount in two weeks, you know, <laughs> which is pretty, pretty impressive. I yeah. think that's pretty cool. Um, and then so, but when I was coming down to the numbers, I, this is some, another statement I kind of wanted to make was whenever I first started, I almost felt like I was keeping up with the Joneses and I needed to know those numbers all the time. Like I was worried about how many jobs I was doing and that's all I was focused on. And I think that lead, led to some of our mistakes where we we're trying to do grow too fast, too much rapid growth. And we weren't thinking about like internally everything running well. And, and I th think it was like, I may have repeated myself because of ADD, but, uh, keeping up with the Joneses, like we were comparing ourselves to other home inspection companies. Yeah. Does that make sense? Like it does. It does. Although I think we didn't really do that very long. No. Once we had all the proper systems in place, we were able to realize that we could grow steady and, but you know, slowly up steady and still be successful. Right. And that's what I was saying. I think it was just recently, you know, I. For me anyways, maybe not for you, but like for me, it was just like, oh, I haven't even thought about the numbers really at all. This well, year. you know me, I don't even look at the numbers and, until I run them once a month. Right. That's my rule. It's too anxiety inducing to look at numbers or even day by day numbers because you start to get in your own head. Right. Yeah. So as long as, you know, everyone's working and uh, we're sticking with that marketing plan that we created everything else just falls into place. And if you're sitting there just looking at the numbers all the time, it does create like... You oh. can actually hold yourself back because yeah. you're not... I mean, you're giving out negative energy or anxious energy. Yeah, just stick with the marketing plan, stick with uh, you know, the, the daily routine and things just start to roll and fall into place. I think it reflects the quality of our home inspections too. Um, oh, yeah. There are some inspection companies in our area that grew exponentially the same time we did. And um, we do hear reflections on their quality of their work. Yeah, because it was too big. Too They're big, just too, too big, fast. too fast with not enough um, solutions and uh, systems in place. And training. And know. training, yeah. yeah. It's all about, I told you this, I run our home inspection company like a law firm. Yeah. I use the same titling, the same type of business setup, et cetera. And um, you don't want to grow a law firm too fast because you got to get the billable hours in. It's the same exact thing for a home inspection company. You have to have the billable hours 
before yeah. you can start adding more home inspectors. Yeah, yeah. It's, so, yeah, the thing is what I'm trying to get to say is like, don't try to think about numbers too much because it will slow your growth whenever it comes to home inspections. And it also just, it was like, it like mentally messes you up. Like that's all you can think about. Did I hit 200 inspections this month? Did I hit 155 inspections, you know, in two weeks or whatever? No, just like, if you have like a down week, be like, Hey, am I making the phone calls? Am I doing the meetings? Are we doing the training? Uh, are we sending out the letters or the, are our emails going out? Is the customer service there? That's what you should be thinking about. Not so much of like that in number, it, everything else will fall into place as long as your customer service is there. Yeah, I agree. Okay, cool. So moving on, uh, we are finally going to answer those questions. I just kind of wanted to hit that point when it came into the numbers, us answering the questions, because I, I kind of feel like it sets, sets the tone, sets the mindset. So these are from Adam, like you mentioned, and Adam is from Tennessee. So I do want to point out right now, he's not from Texas. Okay. So Adam, we will kind of disclaimer what things you might need to look further into as, as they apply to the state of Tennessee and not the state of Texas. Uh, cause believe it or not, I do not have proficiency in all 50 States for inspection requirements. Shoot, we barely got Texas <laughs> down. <laughs> uh, first question is how to set yourself apart from other inspectors. What should I look for in other inspectors? So the big thing we, we kind of just touched on this is we set ourselves off, what, out, apart, uh, <laughs> by really being, or generating a quality product. And one big thing is that is including the termite inspection for free and reading the report on site and having that report sent out within an hour of the inspection. I think uh, one of the biggest values there is like customer service because sometimes in what you said is reading the report on site. A lot of people really think about time like, oh, I need to make it to my next job. But really, you need to spend that time, that quality care with the client so they fully understand what they're getting instead of just like a report full of just bad stuff. You just want to educate the client and that's part of the customer service. It's like read over the report, kind of give them an idea of what they're about to get. And even if you're not completing that inspection report on site, you know, that actually takes some pretty good training to be able to do. But if you can't complete it on site, at least give them an, a rundown of like the top three, top five things of what to expect or what they're going to expect if they purchase the property. Uh, just like the last podcast that we were talking about with Carrie, you're not telling them what to negotiate on. Yeah. You're, and actually you can't in yeah, the state of Texas. You're, you're, you're informing them like these are the three to five major items or major components on the home. And are they comfortable with moving forward? And if they're not, then they need to discuss like how to start uh, manipulate the transaction, I would say. Yeah. And the other thing is we recently had a great compliment that said we were the only home inspection company this person had ever used where the inspector stopped what he was doing and introduced to him, himself to the client as soon as he saw the client on the property. Yeah, That is one of the rules that we do, you know, and uh, the rules, but it's one of the systems that we have in place. You know, it's about the client feeling acknowledged. So as soon as the client, you know, drives up, drives in the driveway, wherever you're at, except if you're on the roof, obviously. But if you're on the roof to say, hey, I'll be down in a minute, finish your job, which is awesome. If you they drive up and you're on the roof, that's like, hey, man, this guy's working for me. But you get off the uh, you get off the roof and you talk to him. And one of the most important questions that you can ask the client is, um, you know, what are your major concerns? If you and that makes them understand that you care about what they care about. You know, mm -hmm. it's a line opens up that line of communication. And as soon as they, uh, you know, express whatever they care, you know, exp tell them your routine. And as soon as you're done explaining the routine, repeat what the client told you about, be like, Hey, I'll make sure I'll take a look at that HVAC like you asked, or I'll look at the roof in that specific location that you're worried about and then let them know when they're going to receive the report and whenever it's finished. So they, they're fully informed about how the inspection is going to run out. Yeah. Don't assume that anyone knows anything because yeah. most of the time, this you're the is, smartest guy in the room in the most case, <laughs> yeah. even if they say they're engineers. Yep. Um, second question is what reporting software? So we use old fashioned software. It's very good though. Cause it, we think it gives out the best report what's well, called whisper. So the whisper thing, reporter. yeah, whisper reporter, the thing to know is, is whisper only for Texas? 
Uh, no, it's actually it can be used for any type oh. of reporting software. So like if you're an engineer or if you're a, a termite inspector or if you're a home inspection in any state, you can manipulate it in any form. It's completely, you can literally create any type of report you want on this report software, but it requires a lot of back end work. Yes. Yeah, so that's what I was going to say. The biggest negative of Whisper is um, it runs on what appears to be a Windows 95 based <laughs> design, which is a, which can be tedious and there is a learning curve. If you want easier um, software, there is HomeGage, there is Spectora. Yeah, there's other ones. There's, that, there's quite a few. But it also hinders what your product looks like. Exactly. What well. is your product going to look like? What is your product going to look like on a phone? What is it going to look like on a tablet, a computer? What does your product look like printed out? And in our opinion, Whisper has definitely delivered the best looking product. And and also it's about the ease of read for the client too. That's one of the things I noticed is like some of these newer softwares, uh, their product, <clears throat> sorry, whenever they're reviewing their client, they have to be connected to Wi-Fi because mm -hmm. they have so much data on it. Yeah. Well, a PDF can load pretty much anywhere uh, immediately and then they can scroll through it and our PDF looks so clean. Also... What is used in a courtroom, you know, they're going to be looking at a PDF version of your report. They're not going to be looking at the web-based product. So whenever they, if it ever ends up going that far, hopefully not, but it is a legal document, they're going to use that PDF version, the printed out version of your report. And you want to see, you, you want to be clean, be, be very clean and very neat. Perhaps the biggest benefit, though, is you only have to pay for Spectora once. Yes, that's a, that's actually great. Yeah, but I don't remember what it is. I think it's like it, six or seven hundred dollars. It is. I yeah. don't think it was that expensive. I think it was five fifty the last time we went through it. But has he raised the price? Maybe. I, I mean, we just recently purchased purchased a new. Uh, I think it was five fifty, um, but don't quote me on that. Yeah. So yeah, he has a new version. Yeah, not new version, but yeah, he has a version of it out right now, and. Uh, if you purchase it in uh, Whisper Reporter, this actually goes back to our comments. Our comments actually and template can be fully uploaded into um, that software. And if you purchase our comments, I give you the templates and the comments with it. So yeah. if you have Whisper Reporter and you purchase our comments, I'll give you the easy access. So you don't have to individually type them all out. I, I really do like Whisper Reporter. I've used all the other ones. And yes, I get set in my old ways where I get stuck on something and I like it. But I mean, I really dove into one of those phone based softwares and I, and I was amazed by it, how great it looked and it looked awesome. And at first it looks really good, but after a while you start using it, you see all the glitches that can happen. And Whisper Reporter is on the tablet specifically. So no matter what, you could produce a report and get it out to your client wherever you're at. Yeah. So the one thing to consider with Whisper Reporter being one price, most of these other inspection softwares are a yearly subscription in addition to either per report or a monthly price. Oh yeah. So yeah. you're paying a yearly subscription and you're either paying by report or you're also paying a monthly storage fee or something like that. But there are some advantages to those softwares too. It's like they don't, you don't need like inspection support network with some of them. Yeah. So, um, if you're like a solo man operation, you know, it can work out because you don't have to collect as much data as we do. But anyways, the question was, is what report softwares do we, do I use? We're always going to say whisper. Yeah. Sorry. It goes Not back sorry. and I like the simplicity <laughs> and the complexity of whisper reporter, you know, one time fee. I'm not getting hit all the time. And literally the guy that runs it, his name's Larry. That's, Larry's from Texas, right? Yeah. Okay, that's why I got confused. I thought it was Texas only because yep. Larry's from Texas. You can call him with literally anything and he'll help you out and then update it and he gets it back to you so fast. His customer service is through the roof and a uh, great guy too as well. So question three, I'm going to answer this one. Um, <coughs> how much insurance do I need and should I look at the bare minimum my state requires? So the answer to that is a million dollars and no. The issue we find often here in Texas, the state of Texas requires that we hold $100,000 of insurance, except the builders got wise to that. So they insist that all any builder that walks into new builds, that's all builders. I've never met one that 
didn't say this, has a million dollars of insurance. Yep. And that's how they get away, at least in the state of Texas, with not allowing inspectors into their properties. So that's why you want to hold um, a million dollar policy, or at least if you can find out whatever the builder minimum requirement is. Because your state minimum requirement, yeah, that's going to get you into single families. But if you live in a really active new build area, you're going to exclude a whole market if you don't carry that full amount of insurance that builders require. And one other thing, too, that you want to make sure that your insurance covers is like if you have drones or, you know, you're using sewer scope cameras or any type of crawl bot or something like that, make sure that's added onto your insurance policy. And whenever you add stuff onto that, it actually doesn't change it by a whole lot, but you want to make sure it's on there. And if you do any type of wood destroying insect inspection, especially in the state of Texas, you have to hold separate wood destroying insect insurance. Um, but you need to check with the state of Tennessee for that. Yep. So cool. question number four, should I start off as a sole proprietor, save up money and then become an LLC? Well, let me tell you the story of a business that started <laughs> as a sole proprietor and then became an LLC. That's a mess. It was us. <laughs> yeah. uh, in 2018, we officially switched from A Action Home Inspection Group, DBA, to uh, A Action Inspection Group, LLC. And there were a lot of th reasons behind that. But um, essentially... An LLC, the biggest benefits of an LLC is your personal assets are protected. So as a sole proprietor, if someone sues your company and wins, they can then come after your personal assets. As an LLC, if someone sues your company and wins, they can only go after the assets of the company, which really can make a difference. The other thing is Chris and I took an additional step and became an s core of the LLC. So our, um, our company is actually an LLC operating as an s core Now you need to check, this is a federal level, um, basically tax pass through. It means it's a shareholder corp corporation. No one actually owns a action. They're only shareholders and they happen to be sitting at this. This is a board meeting too, in yeah. addition to a podcast. I'm going to write this off. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so Chris and I are 50, 50 shareholders. Uh, he could buy me out. I could buy him out. We could also invite other shareholders in if we wanted. Um, obviously we're not public, like that's not the shares I'm talking about, but what it means is we get paid as shareholders of the company, um, which is a tax pass through, which means our taxes, our personal taxes are a little less. Yeah. Um, as a sole proprietor, you're going to be taxed more and your taxes are going to be harder as an LLC. You're going to have hard taxes too, but as a sole proprietor, they're going to scrutinize every single cent and dime An LLC, um, they they'll allow you to, uh, a little more leeway. Yep. Yeah. So, um, to answer that question, you should start off as an LLC right away. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, and, there's no there's no benefit of being a sole proprietor. And I think I saw in the uh, forums one day, I was just kind of going through and that same question was brought up and it's start off an LLC and there's most of them are LLC S Corps ex ran exactly how we're ran. So the other thing is you. So we have. DBA is under our LLC. So in the state of Texas, you can register your DBA under your LLC. And we have three. We have, so under A Action Inspection Group, we have A Action Home Inspection Group, Sharp Eye Pest Control, and Home Inspection Whisper. Yeah, well, Home Inspection Whisper. So is that's amazing. also what an LLC is. It allows you to create kind of a tree of little tag along businesses. Mm -hmm. uh, so you don't have to keep filing taxes for every different thing you open. Yep. Uh, all right. So the next question is, is uh, the best way to market? myself and that's almost a whole podcast that is a podcast Par podcast yeah, 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 i yeah, would say right. buy the book you know buy oh so actually that meant to let up to what or earlier when we brought it up i meant to say that earlier man i, I messed up so yeah it's in we actually have a, a mary wrote a book with ec's our, our marketing manager and what she they wrote a book exactly like how we operate and we have a podcast too on the best way to market yourself. And I'd go back and listen to that too it's, as well. It's actually, I feel bad, but we really can't answer it in what, like, and even five minutes. Yeah. It, it's too complex. It's too complex. And there's several podcasts in this podcast of like how to market yourself. I'm not even trying to promote to go back and get listening hours on YouTube or the podcast. It's just it's a just, loaded question. It's a, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. It, it, I mean, mm -hmm. honestly, it takes two of us to market and just explaining our separate jobs just in the marketing category would be. I can answer it with a trick though. Uh, one of the marketing strategies. Okay. So I'd go with one. Uh, and the, the I'd say one of the best ones is, is whenever I was a single man operator and I was just going out there and I think the most effective way whenever I first started 
there's not just a one most effective way, but I feel like they made the biggest impact where I still see it. That helped you get off the ground. Yeah. Was a lot of people go to all the, the end of the offices and they think they're going to get it. And it's not, you know, those, that's where they're really working and they don't really want to be bothered. They're working on deals and uh, agents. Sorry. I recommend going to open houses and the open houses, the people in the open houses, those agents, they're typically not even the listing agents. They're the hustlers. They're the ones out there trying to drive up business and really get into the real estate game. And I would recommend going and just stopping in and talking to them. And bring a little, bring a spottled water or like um, a goodie bag of snacks or yeah. something. Because open houses are boring. Yeah. And don't bother them if they're working. You know, if they're in there working, hey, it is what it is. But, you know, you get one in there and there's no one really visiting them at the time. Sit there, spark up a five minute conversation. Tell them a little bit about yourself, what you're doing. And uh, if they need any help, you know, please you know, use your services and make it quick. You're not in there trying to explain everything about your business. I know you're yeah. excited about it, starting it out. Just go in there. Hey, I do this. This is what was great about my product. You know, good luck working. And as soon as a client goes in, hey, you know, you got to work and then get out, you know, immediately. So my one recommendation would be if your city or state has an, a realtor association, mm -hmm try to get in on the good side of that realtor association and uh, get involved, get involved. And that was something else that helped us a lot when we got started and something we still use. I actually now am an instructor for our realtor association um, uh, because we've gotten involved with it and um, it's a good way to make friends and keep friends and uh, get a lot of good contacts. And, and just remember the home inspection industry is a relationship based business mm -hmm. and it's not so much of just like get a job, move on to the next one, get a job. It, you know, you want to maintain these relationships for a really long time. And, you know, even every single previous client you had, try to keep up with the relationship and, you know, keep up with the letter writing and kind of go from there. All right. The, so the, next. Well, actually one more thing, the best, um, <clears throat> the best way to manage relationships or learn about how to manage relationships would be the Buffini program. Yep. Uh, and that's a real estate program. So you might think, well, it doesn't apply to me, but definitely look into Brian Buffini. He does really good classes on how to make relationships and manage and even has a CRM. If you're listening to a podcast, he even has a podcast too, He does. you know, and it sounds like it's all about, you know, talking about how real estate agents are supposed to gather up work. But then if you take the same concept, you're just taking the concepts and you're implementing it in your business, it actually works out really well. So number six is how important is it to use a review system? <laughs> I'm going to uh, let you answer that this is super since easy. you've always been obsessed. You've been more on Yeah, This that. is super easy. Reviews equal cash, you know, it, just like anything else in the world. And especially a millennial game. And I think you are a millennial. Maybe. I don't know. But um, he could even uh, be a zoomer <laughs> because we're 32. So if he's 25, then he I would be a zoomer. I don't zoomer. know how old he is. But, yeah. <laughs> uh, but the thing is, is... um. Uh, reviews equal cash and by us doing anything today we're always reading review reviews and most people you're going to find out are reading reviews about your home inspection home inspections or home inspectors and and i i it happens a lot where our home inspectors get chosen because they're like no i was reading your reviews and i saw that you know uh brendan or josh uh are on there a lot and i wanted to make sure i used them and that's how so we, reviews we, equal money so just implement that immediately and we use a review tracking software called blip it's by Sheehan thomas that is last Sheehan. name just go, let's go with Sheehan. Sheehan, he's a yeah. really i'm sorry <laughs> Sheehan. i should know your last name since i've known you for years now um but there's just too much information in this brain uh but Sheehan's amazing his system's amazing we use blip we've used blip since 2018 or 27 i think 2018 um and it's never failed us so definitely look into blip Nice. Um, number seven is how to keep the mindset of quality versus quantity on performing inspections. Man, I think I nailed that question at the beginning. I, I think I was just going to say, I think we've already discussed that. Yeah. Just, uh, don't think I used to think about quantity all the time. Like literally, you know, how, how many can I get? How many can I get? Cause you know, you're always thinking about the more the money uh, you can make by more inspections. Well, that's not 100% true. Whenever you think that way, more mistakes are made and it costs you. A and it looks and it, people can see that it looks sloppy. Yeah, it costs you a lot of money. So always think about quality and then the quantity just starts to happen. Like I had no clue, honestly, that we did twenty five hundred. I was like, dang, that's a lot of inspections, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but 
Uh, some other companies probably do a lot more, but to me, I, I mean, I'm very happy with those numbers, especially with the staffing issue that we had this year. So like, I, I just, and I, and I was surprised we even hit that number because of our staffing issue. We had, we lost, you know, two really good inspectors, not out of, we bad, lost we lost two, yeah. yeah but, I, was gonna, but, I thought it was more, but, but you're re, right, it but, was two. But then we retrained and uh, went back at it. But it's like, the the thing is, is like, um, you don't ever, you know, get out of the, co- uh, you know, quantity mindset as quickly as you can and just go straight into quantity. Yeah. Um, number eight is how to come up with a uni- unique name. Well, uh, we uh, inherited our name, yeah. so we actually never had that problem. Uh, the na- but naming your home inspection company, I, I honestly 100% regret uh, not being able, you know, whenever we switched, not renaming myself, but, you know, A-Action's ingrained. I don't, because who would have had to do the paperwork? <laughs> <laughs> but, ask yourself that but question. Honestly, I think the best name that you could come up with is name yourself after like an animal like bulldog inspections or like uh or you know frog (laughs) or i don't know they're they're just so let's consider who is around us we have brian and brian that's his last name we had redfish uh, because he has red hair yeah i like redfish inspections it's so easy to remember you know it, but um, Fox inspections because his last name is Fox, but then his logo is also a fox. So yeah. he kind of had the best of both worlds. Yeah, but I I like the animal because um, I just remember like, you know, when I used to tell people about a action, a lot of people were having trouble remembering the name a action. And now it's just, you know, whenever I run into people, it's kind of like a name brand uh, that happened over a period of time. But what is Sean Emmerich's? Sean Emmer, his is easy. His is Houston it's Inspect. Houston Inspect. So yeah. that's a you can do that, but you're gonna find a million of those. Like right. so, you name it after your city. But you, he was like one of the first. He was one of the first. Companies. Yeah. So, so he like, gets he gets he got in on the ground floor with that name. Yeah. But uh, another one we see a lot is Texas inspections. Yeah. Um, or Texas quality inspections. Yeah. So you can blend in that way. So I try to go with like something unique and honestly like. Yeah, and try to get like some sort of branding of an animal. People really remember that animal, you know. And you know what they don't want, or I think looks bad, is best inspections or high quality inspections. Right. Or man, I think like if you did like golden inspections with like a golden retriever uh, <laughs> as like the the logo, everyone's gonna remember that. So yes, yeah, especially if the golden retriever has a uniform and is yeah. used in all your marketing. We should start marketing our tiger more. Yeah. Well. I, uh, we're the Tiger King. <laughs> we actually don't own a tiger. We adopt, awesome, that we though. adopted, we have adopted for the last three or four years, the tiger Barani and the Houston zoo. Probably only feeds him for one day, but, uh, yeah, I know <laughs> <laughs> what we pay to adopt him probably only feeds him for like 10 minutes. All right. But he's cool. cute. That's a good one. Um, number nine is tools that a beginning home inspector should buy. I'm going to let you answer that one. Okay, so I actually have a tool video on YouTube, uh, and it's actually one of my most popular videos. If you just go in, I do a home inspection, home inspector tool breakdown, which I could probably do again because that's already what two years old. Which yeah, is, man, time just flies, which is pretty cool. Time flies when COVID happens over and over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> and you and you go into a hermit cave and you close yourself into a, a and house. then you can say they say you can come out and then they're like no 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 go back in go back in. Yeah, yeah but uh, I have a tool video over there and I cover all the tools and honestly in the big scheme of things of starting a any business at all I'd go with this getting as many of those as you possibly can because all the tools that I recommend they're still I they last you years and we have an Amazon list so if you go to home IW is it on there the home IW and it's actually on our own actual home inspection page to our tool list of what we use actionhouston.com yeah and uh, if you click it you know it gives back to the podcast a little bit every time you purchase a tool um what are some this final question very good questions Adam and the final one is a good one except I'm getting a spam phone call there we go what are some things you would tell yourself in the beginning that you didn't know, but now you do know? So I'm going to answer this first. Go for it. I would remind myself that um, everything will be okay. <laughs> <laughs> because when we first started the company, I worked because we really weren't making enough money to support us both. Uh, right. This company wasn't making enough money to support us both. So I worked and it was very stressful. We actually 
thinking about the stress of thinking about money all the time, as far as trying to start the business and how are we going to survive and everything. And there were even some weeks where it was like, well, maybe this isn't working and maybe we oh, need to, you need to start I, thinking about something. I think I even looked at like cleaning out gutters. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I was going to be a gutter cleaner for a company or something. And yeah. we were really young. We were like, I was like 24 and you were like 27. So, and that's not a great age for self-esteem anyway. So just reminding myself that I have to, I, at that age and that maturity, I could only look in the short term. Right. Like, how are we going to pay our bills? And now I, I should have, well, I was young, but if I could go back, I would remind myself to look at the long term, not yeah. the short term. Yeah, just stick with the everyday hustle, stick with the grind. And then honestly, like on Mary's book, I think we charge like $50. And if you just stick with the basic routine of, you know, market, letter writing, just wake up, go and do it the jobs will come like you just make if sure you build it they will come if you build it they will come <laughs> get your product down you know get uh, i had really good training which is always a, an advantage but you know get if you, i have to put myself in your shoes a little bit you know make sure that you have a really solid product make sure that your you know your comment database is there and just stick with the routine wake up market make your phone calls and go do your inspections. And then as the inspections come in, don't forget to stick to follow up the backbone of exactly what you did to get the job. Just keep doing the routine and eventually it'll start to come. And I think uh, if you go back and listen to one of our podcasts with Matt Brading, and we talk about how I coached him through, you know, starting his home inspection business and he had a side job and eventually the jobs just started kept coming in because he was doing a really good job and he had a really good product. So um, the thing is, is just stick with the core of customer service, you know, really good product and it'll, it'll, it'll happen. The other big thing is, especially if you're going into multi, if you're going into a firm like we have, is go with your gut. There have been many times we've hired people that we should not have hired because we didn't go with our gut or I, somebody didn't go with my gut. Yeah. Yeah. So... <laughs> Well, we can talk about that one later. I think he's talking more about the beginning uh, level stuff. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, just stick with just stick with you know the basics. The basics are the most important thing, and the jobs will the jobs will come. You know, just customer service is everything. I think one of the looking back on our adventure, our almost ten year adventure, one of the biggest turning points in our lives was the day we sat at the table and you told me that I didn't have to have another job anymore. Oh, yeah. That I could quit the job that I hated. I won't say where it was. <laughs> uh, and that it would be okay that I could, yeah, we'll figure we it. could both work at the company and yeah. make money and, and make, and we owned a house at that point. We'll figure it out. Yeah, we could figure it out. And that yeah. was crazy. And that, that's another thing too, is I'd say, you know, what I told Matt Brading too, just at the, there's a point where you just, just jump and just do it. Yeah. And, then, and if uh, I think uh, Gary Vee gives this advice too, and a lot of people probably don't suggest it, but like, if you don't have a choice, you know, it's like the survival method. Yeah. If you don't have a choice, you're going to have to make it work. And so that's like, how, when our business took off yeah, was like, when I quit my job and joined full time. Yeah. Like we had no choice. We had but, no choice but to have <laughs> successful business. <visit. laughs> yeah. We had three dogs to feed in a house. Yeah. So, so um, yeah. yeah so, uh, but that was a big turning point. And uh, I don't know if you remember that yeah. conversation, yeah, but just the, yeah. the when we sat down at dinner and it probably, was like... Probably at a Mexican food restaurant. No, it was at our house. Oh, and okay. I was just, re again, reiterating how miserable I was. And then you just looked at me and you were like... Just quit? Just quit. <laughs> we just joined the company full time. And it was just like, I never occurred to me that was an option because we were yeah. so caught up in the moment and yeah. not looking forward. Yeah. So. All right, cool. So we got a little sentimental there. Yeah, that's funny. All <laughs> right, cool. So we'll end the podcast there. Um, it, but remember always, please, if you can uh, purchase uh, Mary's book, uh, it is exactly how we operate on mm -hmm. a day to day basis. Purchase the uh, comments when you have the chance, if you want to improve your home inspection database. And we always do send the updates as soon as we update the comments and, uh, and buy a t-shirt. Buy a t-shirt. <laughs> Help. Thank you, Adam. I want to thank Adam, especially. Those are great questions. Um, they're questions that we haven't talked about in a while. Yeah. So I feel like it's really good to circle back for anyone who's just now listening. Right, exactly. Um, and then if you have a question too, uh, listen to, uh, and you're listening to the podcast, please uh, submit them. It's the best way how we get the content out yeah. there. I don't know exactly all the time what y'all are 
looking for because it's I I'm not wearing your shoes. So that's true. And yeah. and and we haven't been in the starting line in almost ten years. Yeah, we're just <laughs> it's like almost a, a routine for us now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but never get too comfortable in that routine, which is another podcast. Yeah. All right. So, cool. uh, all, right. all right. Well, thank you so much, Adam. And thank you, everyone. And Thanks make sure listening. to like, like and subscribe, like, right? Like, like and subscribe. Like I said it. Yeah. I like it. All right. All Thanks, right. guys. Bye. Bye.